Today's video is sponsored by Rakuten. In this video, I'm transforming more famous movies into Lego, some animated and others live action. The last build is an epic battle from Marvel, so be sure to stick around. Let's get into it. Our first build today is the poster from the original movie. The main focus on it is the paddy wagon, so that's where I started the build. Luckily, I already had these two pieces for the front of the bun. I connected those two and started working on the layers of the burger. These leaf pieces were perfect for the lettuce, and then I added a layer of cheese, the patty, and the bottom of the bun. I jumped back up to the top and made the grilled leather interior. It also has this steering wheel. While also including this trunk, the windshield from Luke's Landspeeder is the perfect fit for these rounded pieces and matches the movie. On the bottom, I added the pickle wheels, which roll decently enough, a license plate, and this propeller on the back. And finally, I added in this flag, which uses this bendable tube piece to help it look like it's flowing in the wind. After the paddy wagon, I made this base with the road shooting off into the distance, then added this background, which uses the same style I used for my bikini bottom build. The paddy wagon isn't simply cruising down the street, but flying through the air. To get the angle right, I used these hinge pieces along with this clear windshield piece that it can lean up against. I then started making some of the other characters. For King Neptune, I'm using Ariel's tail piece along with pieces from the King minifigure. Overall, it turned out to be pretty accurate to the movie. Princess Mindy was a bit harder. I don't have another mermaid tail, so I had to give her this squid one along with Hera's face, but doesn't have glasses. I added in the other regulars like Squidward, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, and these bikini bottom residents. I also gave this one a cowboy look to match the character named Dennis, but he looks way too nice. I also added in Gary and Plankton, so I used the Mystery Machine's hubcaps to make these sea plants. For final details, I added in these custom jellyfish to the background along with this inner tube. For a bonus fact, LEGO officially released their own version of the paddy wagon in the set Krusty Krab Adventures, but it's pretty minimalistic, and like I've said before, I'm sure if LEGO ever brought back Spongebob, all the sets would look a lot better. Next, we have another adventure at see with a scene from Pirates of the Caribbean, The Black Pearl. I recently rewatched it and it holds up outstandingly well and has to be one of my favorite movies of all time, with Jack Sparrow being one of the best characters. With that in mind, I chose to build his very first scene, where he sails into Port Royal on a small sinking boat. I started this build by using a ton of these clear pieces over this blue plate to make the water. It didn't end up looking right, so I started over with these larger, more blue plates that look way better. After that, I set up a nice black border and began working on the sinking sail. I attached a rope and added in this area for Jack to stand along with these flag pieces and he's holding his famous compass that doesn't point north. Then I started on the dock. The first version I made was really small and made everything look a bit uneven so I decided to widen it out. I used these classic pirate minifigures to make those two British soldiers. They play a really small part in the movie but they're pretty memorable. It's a simple scene but one that makes a decent little display and was a lot easier to manage than trying to build a full scale ship. Speaking of which, the prices for those are absolutely insane. A sealed black pearl costs at least a thousand dollars. However, buying Lego doesn't have to be that expensive with today's sponsor Rakuten. Rakuten is the largest cashback site which partners with over 3,500 of the biggest name brands like Walmart, Target, and even the Lego store to bring you cashback, coupons, and promo codes all for free. I've been using Rakuten for over two years to get deals on Lego sets like this Bad Batch shuttle. So when I heard they wanted to sponsor this video, I was so excited. They easily help you save money, and if you aren't using them, you're missing out. Using the Rakuten app or the Chrome extension, you just click through the links for your favorite retailers and then shop like you normally would. This week only, shop Rakuten's Big Give Week event and get up to 15% cash back on hundreds of your favorite retailers. And don't forget, it's not just for LEGO, but for all kinds of stores like GameStop, Academy Sports, Best Buy, and a ton more. Sign up today by clicking the link in my video's description and get a $40 sign up bonus when you make a qualifying purchase. And thank you again to Rakuten for sponsoring today's video. A lot of you guys have asked me to try the Back to the Future poster, so that's what we have next. Since 2013, LEGO has made a handful of Back to the Future sets, with the very first being the DeLorean. I never got that set, and today it's another one that's really expensive, so I figured I'd try to recreate it with my own pieces. And long story short, that ended up being way harder than I anticipated with trying to track down all of the specific parts in the original colors, so try that at your own risk. However, I really like how the final product turned out. I made some modifications, like smoothing out the hood with a 
single piece since the original was so blocky and I didn't have those tube pieces so I had to make the wires on the car with a mishmash of parts that I do have. The car has a lot of other cool features like the doors that swing up, exhaust pipes, tail lights, the wheels that can shift down like in the movie, and those cool engine exhaust things on the back side of it. It can also fit Marty McFly and Doc Brown. The only con to the build is that it's really chunky and completely dwarves the minifigures. I prefer slimmer Lego cars, but that's just my opinion. Next, I set out to make the road on fire that we see in the movie and on the poster. It's another one with the road shooting off into the sunset, so that's where I started. I left those gray plates exposed so that I could add in a trail of flames that the DeLorean leaves. For that, I used a mix of clear orange pieces as well as some flames. Finally, I added in this sunset in the background, which is one of my favorites to date. For one last detail, I gave Marty McFly these Lego glasses that he can't wear but look like the ones on the poster. Another fan request was the Matrix, so here's my build for it. On the original poster, the characters are the main focus with the background being pretty foggy and blurry, so I changed it up a little bit to make the background completely black with these translucent green pieces built into it to simulate the famous black and green coat of the Matrix. For the minifigures, we have Neo, who's using Nick Fury's jacket. I also made Morpheus, who I previously featured in my 50 movie characters in Lego video. He's using Percival Graves' torso and legs, which have blue and red accents that echo his most famous scene. This is Trinity, who has Superman's hair, and Black Widow's torso and legs. And finally, this is Cypher. The bad cop face looks mean, but unfortunately doesn't have a goatee like his. You are a slave, Neo. You've been living in a world of instructions, where everything you are has already been predetermined by someone else. You follow the rules, build what you're told to, and you never question it. But I'm here to offer you a choice. What choice? The choice to break free from the instructions, to use your imagination and build something new, something truly your own. You take the red stud and join me in a journey that will push you to the limits of your creativity but will set you free. You take the blue stud and return to your previous life, the life where you never question what you're building. It's a life where you'll never truly be free. Disney movies were a huge part of childhood for almost everyone I know, and everyone likes the original Lion King. And that works really well because LEGO released their first lions just a couple of years ago in these wildlife rescue sets that gave fans a ton of new animals like these elephants and monkeys. Ever since then, I've wanted to make a Lion King build, and I can't think of a better scene than the opening at Pride Rock. I started by laying down the basic shape and then started building it up with a ton of dark gray slopes until finally getting a shape that looked vaguely like the one we see in the film. It uses a variety of building techniques that mix slopes and angled plates. It narrows as it stretches out, but it's wide enough for both of the lions to fit on it. Unfortunately, LEGO has never made a mandrel monkey like Rafiki, so we'll be using this old monkey instead. However, I think Rafiki would make a great addition as a minifigure in one of the LEGO Disney minifigure series. He could use a regular minifigure torso and legs, and just come with a molded head similar to how LEGO has made all of the Muppet minifigures. I also gave him this stick like the one he beats Simba with over the head. I also made this Zazu that looks pretty accurate for only using 12 pieces. Then I made this African style of tree with these old pieces that came in LEGO Pirate sets and added a toucan on top of it. For some finishing touches, I added this blue sky backdrop and gathered around all these LEGO animals for the presentation of Simba. There's also this place under the rock for the hyenas which I'm representing with these wargs from The Hobbit. For a more recent animated classic, I went with Despicable Me. A couple of years ago, LEGO released a line of sets for Minions The Rise of Gru, so we'll be using those minifigures. The majority of the posters have a simple design that uses a white and orange color scheme. So I whipped up a presentation board in that style where you can arrange all of the LEGO minions along with Gru. Albeit, it's kind of weird that Gru is basically the same size as the minions in LEGO form when he's like four times bigger in the movies. I went ahead and made this minions lab along with this minifigure for Dr. Nefario. LEGO doesn't have a good hairpiece for him, so I'm just using this spike piece. The lab has a bunch of different contraptions and chemicals. I used a lot of silver pieces to try to give the machines a metal look. I also added this ladder and this tube like the ones the minions travel in. In the movies, Minion Bob has two different colored eyes and this is a detail that Lego included in his minifigure. And the eyes can also be removed or replaced with others, which can end up looking pretty creepy. Our final battle for today is an epic scene from the MCU, the battle for Wakanda at the end of Infinity War. Rewatching the scene, it's basically a wide open field with one section that dips down and gets a lot dustier where all of the action takes place. So to set up the foundation, I started with this tan base plate and set up a dark path that I sprinkled with these tan pieces to give it some texture and rubble. After that, I added another layer of dark tan plates to give it more elevation and then created this layer of grass with a lot of these green wedge plates. I sprinkled in a ton of these grass 
pieces since it's a pretty tall field. At the end, there's also a lot of woods, so I added in a couple of these bushes and trees as well. The coolest part of the entire battle is Thor's entrance with just how powerful he is. It's definitely Thor's best scene in the entire MCU, so I knew I wanted to nail that part here. More specifically, I wanted to try to build him throwing Stormbreaker at Thanos. It's a visually striking scene, and I knew it would be challenging, but I had to try it. To start, I collected all of these blue power blast and lightning pieces, and then tried to chain them together into one single piece. After quite a bit of trial and error, I came up with this version, which includes Stormbreaker clipped in the middle of it. The next challenge was getting it to stay elevated under its own weight. I came up with using this minifigure neck piece to connect the power blast straight to Thanos' chest. Overall, this is definitely my favorite thing I made for this entire video. We still have to add in all of the other heroes. We have Falcon flying over the battlefield, Winter Soldier and Rocket Raccoon working together, Captain America ripping this guy in half, Groot, Okoye and Scarlet Witch working together, Black Panther in the mix, and Black Widow as well. War Machine is also flying around. Setting up all of the heroes makes the scene feel way more detailed than when it's just a regular field. You should have gone for the head.